Good morning. Uh, this lecture is from the course of History of Architecture and Urbanism in Mesopotamia, dedicated to undergraduate students of the second year in the Department of Architecture at Nahrain University. The contents of this lecture will be defining the Mesopotamia area, the land between the two rivers, uh, timeline, including timeline of Mesopotamia, people who lived in Mesopotamia. Second topic, we'll go to the origins of Mesopotamian cities. And uh, finally, the components of Mesopotamian city. Mesopotamia is widely known as the land between the two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. It covers all modern Iraq and the northern eastern part of Syria, bounded by the Euphrates to its west. This geographical region has been differentiated by scholars and culture, uh, ecologi ecologically and culturally into two zones, Lower and Upper Mesopotamia. Lower Mesopotamia is flat and dry, but with alluvial plains and herding lands extending in southern Iraq. Permanent settlements depended for irrigation on natural or artificial water courses. It was known in early times as Sumer and Akkad, and after the second millennium before Christian era as Babylonia. It includes the marshes area, which represents a rich, and, uh, a rich source of aquatic resources. Upper Mesopotamia, known in later times as Assyria, is more varied in relief and received enough rainfall to enable dry farming and settlement through the countryside. Babylonia and Assyria represented two different cultures in many aspects, yet they became intrinsically bound after the mid of the second millennium before Christian era, and Assyria adopted many of Babylonians' traditions, and the concept of the city itself may have been introduced to Assyria from the south. Regarding the timeline of uh, Mesopotamia, we can see that subsequent cultures started implanting the seeds of civilization in the region as early as the sixth millennium before Christian era. Their remainings are mostly pottery artifacts. The culture of El Obeid, whose traces is noticed by the dawn of the fourth millennium before Christian era, is the first to show evidence of temple building and other sophisticated architecture. However, Urbanism in its contemporary meaning started with the Sumerians who invented the writing around 3200 BCE and with it uh, emerged their first cities. Sumerians settled in the south of Iraq. Their origin is still unknown for archaeologists. The Akkadians formed the first Bedouin immigration to Mesopotamia from the Arab Peninsula. The Amorites, Assyrians, and the Chaldeans followed, and their cities filled the map of Iraq and the surrounding area. Origins of Mesopotamian cities. Uh, regarding their origin, Mesopotamian cities could be classified in two groups. The first includes cities which grew gradually from old agricultural settlements. The second covers cities that were erected by political volition. The earliest cities in lower Mesopotamia are mostly of the first category. They grew from development of older settlements in Neolithic or Chalcolithic prehistory in the sixth millennium before Christian era or earlier, as mentioned previously. Then followed by economic and social developments through the fifth millennium and beyond early urbanization. Hence, the entire process from permanent settlements in southern Mesopotamia to the first cities there took an enormously long time, yet the outburst of the city by the fourth by the mid-4th millennium BCE, with the city of Uruk as the earliest model, seems to occur relatively suddenly. Several 
theories were envisaged discussing the origin of these ancient cities. The approach argued by Robert McAdams has long been the most adhered to among scholars. Adams emphasized the role of the city as an organizer of the redistribution of ag agricultural and pastoral products. He suggested that the agricultural development in ir uh, irrigated farmland with the surplus in food that appeared led to the need for a mediatory role for the exchange of goods. Social stratification followed and classes gradually replaced kin-based groups. Finally, an upper class took hold of the whole management system of the resources. This elite would have first been the temple priesthood which justified its leadership through religion. Centuries later, secular and military authorities usurped the temple. The undertaking of building new cities was known in Mesopotamia as early as the Akkadian era. Sargon of Akkad is known for building his capital Akkad in the 24th century BCE. And the Kassite king, Gurigalzo I, built Dorkorikalzo, north of Babylon, in the 14th century BCE. But the cities which gained the most importance for their majestic realization are those of capital, those capitals of Neo-Assyrian Empire in the first millennium BCE, such as Kalhu, Kartukaltin Norta, and Dur Sharukin. Justifications of these decision, decisions, sorry, are not elaborately cleared in inscriptions. For the building of Kalhu, Ashur Nasrpal merely states that the city built by his predecessor, Shalmansar, had become dilapidated. And for the building of Kartukaltin in Norta and Dur Sharakin, divine requests are claimed by Tukaltin in Orta and Sargon II, respectively. Nevertheless, scholars listed several motives for such endeavors, including population pressure, economic growth, security issues, and the increased desire for the visible representation of royal power. Equally acknowledged was the Assyrian king's desire to outrank Babylon, the central rival, in size, splendor, and religious prominence. Here we can see two cities from Upper Mesopotamia. Assyria, a gradually developed cities with its irregular shape, and Khorsabad of Sargon II with its square walls and formal castle of palaces in the north. Components of the Mesopotamian city. Uncovered sites of different Mesopotamian cities show shared characteristics. And we can use the model of the city of Ur and other cities which enjoyed a great deal of work by archaeologists to display these aspects. Most cities usually consist of three main zones. The first one, one or two centers comprising the religious and administrative institution, Second, the surrounding area of residential neighborhoods. And third, the peripheral zone, which includes the wall and gates, and uh, with them the left spaces inside the city and the surrounding area outside. The institutional center is the religious, political, and or economic headquarter. Its main buildings are usually the main temple with its massive ziggurat, which is the stepped temple tower, dedicated to the patron deity of the city. And there is also the ruler's main palace. These are often surrounded by an inner wall. Together, as in Ur and Dur Sharukin, or separately, as in late Babylon. Other religious or administrative buildings could be enclosed with the center, and the access to the whole complex was limited. 
The center complex served as a focal point and a prominent landmark in the city with its monumental scale of architecture characterized by decorated buttressed walls and projected formal entrances. Neighborhoods surrounding the center were of courtyard houses attached mostly from three sides, often leaving one facade to the street. Houses were con constrained by each other in terms of space and property lines without a consistent or orientation. They were not strictly geometric and their outlines and internal subdivisions changed gradually over time. Houses varied in size, but they relatively were close proximity. Streets and alleys mendered and were irregular and discontinuous sometimes, forming plazas, small plazas and intersections. In addition to houses, neighborhoods included several shops, small shrines, or uh, for relatively minor Mesopotamian deities, and sometimes small workshops spread within the irregular fabric. Some crafts may have been concentrated in specific neighborhoods, such as tanners and metal works. The outer wall of the city with areas on its both sides represents the peripheral zone. The wall defined the boundaries of the city and with its fortifications protected the city against greedy enemies. enemies. Walls also diverted flood water whenever the Tigris or the Euphrates burst in their banks. The city walls were buttressed by towers or bastions higher than the wall itself. The wall of Uruk was found to be nine and a half kilometers long with nearly a thousand semicircular bastions and surrounding mount completes the defense precautions. Massive buttressed gates gave access to the city. Here we can see the city of Assyria with its magnificent uh, walls seen from the river side. Of course, that was an imaginable uh, photo. As Mesopotamian cities lack clear physical ev evidence of markets, it is though uh, thought that open edge zones which form their irregular area left between the end of houses clusters and the walls of the city, in addition to inside or outside areas near the gateways of the cities, as well as near the harbor, were the locus for vibrant commercial exchange. However, a main street of the city could have numerous shops that identify it as the market street, as mentioned by the Assyrian king Sinharib, who described his widening of the market street of Nineveh. Canals and water courses served as a source of water for inhabitants, in addition to being major routes for communication and trade, especially when extended uh, out from the city. In some cities in Lower Mesopotamia, canals running through the city end up in harbors, as we can see here in the city of Ur, sorry, who had uh, two harbors and also the city of Meshkan Shapir, who had two harbors also. Harbors might be inside the city walls near the main gates, and in some cities like Ur and Meshkan Shapir, two harbors have been located in both cases at opposite sides of the settlement, but within the city walls. The harbor section, the Kar in Sumerian or Karu in the Akkadian language had administrative independence and also separate legal status important for the citizens' transaction business there. In Upper Mesopotamia, although whales might have been the main sources of water for neighborhoods, Assyria kings were keen also to provide their cities with additional water sources. 
the remains of the aqueduct at Jerwan, the King Senhari built to provide Nineveh with duct uh, water is still witness of such huge undertakings. Gardens and orchards were also an urban phenomenon of uh, southern Mesopotamian cities, as well as Assyrian cities in the north. They were places for recreation and relaxation. The Epic of Gilgamesh from the mid-2nd millennium BCE tells that Uruk had third of its land for gardens and the two other thirds for temples and houses. Also, the mid-15th century BCE map of Nippur, which appears in the slide here, indicates the presence of open space labeled here, labeled as orchard within the city. Resources confirm that from at least second millennium BCE, Mesopotamian kings who campaigned abroad and received exotic gifts from foreign vassal rulers took a great interest in strange plants and animals which were presumably kept at some distance from the palace, if not outside the city walls. Cities also contained major thoroughfares, which had lustrous names like pray and he will hear you in Babylon, or named after a god or an ethnicity group. More minor streets and alleyways existed also, sometimes named after the principal resident. These streets vary in width and length according to the city size and density of its population and to what extent its administration authorities undertake maintenance. Nabuchodonosor II paved the processional road of Babylon, which can be seen here in the map, from out of the city, through the Ishtar Gate to the Temple of Marduk. Here, the Ishtar Gate and the processional road, and here, the Marduk Temple. And adorned, he also adorned its flanking walls with clay ceramics with reliefs. Minor roads, whether straight or not, were sometimes paved with stone or gravel. Finally, it's worth mentioning that the prominent type of burials in ancient Mesopotamia is known to be underneath the floors of the houses in burial chambers. And such chambers were also found in palaces. However, cemeteries in or outside cities were also known. The city of Ur had a large cemetery in the center of the town, which was in use for several centuries in the middle of the third millennium BC. Thank you very much. Here we have a uh, city of Babylon and its splendid uh, scenery. And with this, we finalize our uh, lecture for today. Thank you.